everybody, it's me, Chasey Poo, and today I'm going to be doing a Q&A! I haven't done one of these in years, and I was like, maybe I should do one, because I'm sure people have some questions, so I thought it'd be interesting to just make one and just a couple of questions. So I put it up on Instagram, and we'll see what we got. Alright, so I forgot to ask people if it's okay to use their usernames in the video. My bad. So I'm just gonna say the questions out loud, and yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I really like this one. Any cultural shocks since living in the US? Oh my god, yes. So I'm from Canada, I've lived in Canada my entire life, and in the last year I actually moved down to the US to be with my partner. We live in New Jersey, and let me tell you, there definitely has been some culture shocks. Obviously I'm aware of all the gun violence, the hate crimes, and the mass shootings, and school shootings, and I'm very aware that that's part of the American culture. However, living here and seeing it on the news is different than being in Canada. So that's actually been a little bit of a shock, which I didn't think it would be, but the gun culture and gun violence is literally like culturally the United States and that's been a little bit of a shock for me. Something else that's been a shock for me is the way that I say things, I get made fun of and I get it, I understand like it's funny the way I say certain things but it's part of my culture and like my Canadian heritage and who I am and it does hurt when I say things like, oh I'm going to physio and you have the, the physiotherapist right in front of me like laughing at me because I said physio when everyone here says PT for physical therapy. Other things are like the way I say cart. I don't say cart. When we go to the store, we put our groceries in a carriage. I just say these little things and a lot of them are translated from French into English because that's just how I learned English. So being like made fun of a little bit and I know it's all jokes and I get that but it makes me feel like I'm losing part of my Canadian-ness and who I am and where I grew up and it's really starting to affect me and I really don't like that. Someone asked what my favorite color is. It is purple. If I go on tea to get growth down there and stop tea after the growing is done, will I keep the high sex drive? Probably not. The reason why your sex drive is higher is because the amount of testosterone in your body is elevated. If you lower that, then your sex drive is gonna go down. All right, what made you choose to grow your hair long again? Also, will you still dye it all those cool colors like you did before? Yes, I will, absolutely. I go through this process where I bleach my hair, keep it bleached for a little bit, then I dye it a lighter color like purple or pink. Once that's faded, I go more to blue. That's usually my process so that I don't have to bleach my hair more than twice or three times a year. Right now I'm going for the blonde though, but for the length of my hair, I'm having a debate, all right? I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should let it long be long again or if I should give it a cut. If you have any ideas on what I should do, hopefully I haven't made a decision yet and that my hair is not cut if you think it should be long. But yeah, because my hair right now just looks like this. It's a little bit off, a little bit hard to maintain, so I just kind of wear a hat sometimes, which is not so great, but I just I don't know what to do. What do you think I should do? All right, where do you get the courage to live with so much authenticity? You have always been so open with your transition and helped so many trans people. It's really admirable. I'm five years into my transition and less open now than I was at the beginning. I don't know how to get past that fear. So I don't really know why I am the way I am, if I'm being completely honest. I feel like when I was younger and I was like, oh my god, I'm trans, I realized that there was no information out there and maybe this would have been something that I would have been able to deal with and like know about when I was younger, younger. So when I was 15 and kind of repressed being trans for three years. I would repress it, come back to it, repress it, come back, knowing every single time when I was like, I'm not trans, that it was gonna come back because I'm trans. It's just, I can't just like shoo it away. Like it's not there. So I think because I did a lot of that yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, back and forth for three years, it kind of messed me up, but also made me realize that I needed information and representation. And it really, really mattered to me that I was going to be at least part of that, where I would give some representation to at least one person that needed to be represented and like feel like there was someone out there that's just like them. So that's why I started my channel and that's when I felt like, I, I mean in the beginning I was very quiet and very reserved and once I started to transition and really realize who I was, I was much more open about who I am and I just felt like I needed to be who I am. Let me say that I started T and after a year I decided to go off and that was so hard for people to understand why I would ever go off of 
tea after wanting it for so many years. For me personally, the changes were just too fast and it was just a whole bunch of other personal stuff, but I needed to take that break. And it's the same thing for top surgery. I felt like pressured to have top surgery, so I scheduled it and then I canceled it. I wasn't ready. I had it next year and I'm so glad I took that year break and really thought about what I needed. And I think those two breaks really helped me reflect on who I am. And that's when I stepped my foot down. I was like, you know what? I'm just me, people aren't gonna like it. I just need to accept who I am and live as proud and as authentically as I absolutely can. And I found that the more authentic I was and actually expressing myself and showing my vulnerable side, that people would react in a great way. People would open up to me and like tell me their struggles and through that experience and those experiences, it helped me affirm that living authentically is like the best way for me to be who I am. And that's why I think that being out and being trans and proud and telling people and like educating is so important for me. However, it's not for everyone. There are some people out there and there's no shame in it that just don't wanna be associated with being trans. I'm not saying that's who you are. I know that you're trying to accept yourself, but it is completely normal. Or there are people who are like, yeah, sometimes I tell people I'm trans, sometimes I don't and that's completely fine. It really depends if it's more like you're trying to accept who you are and live authentically to yourself or if you're trying to live authentically for other people and to other people. For me, it's both. I like to be who I am obviously for myself and live as authentically as I can, but also to be out and authentic so that people can know that, look, trans people are just regular people, we're just that. So for me, it's that. I don't know if I really answered the question, but that's just how I feel. Got a question from Valley. Who is your best trend? That's you. Mm. It's a really important question. What the top five food in your opinion? Oh, now are we talking meals or like independent foods? Let's just do it easy and do like independent food. My number one food would probably be bananas. I love bananas. I don't know if these are gonna be in order, but I'll tell you broccoli, apple, vegan chicken. I can't think of a last one that would be my favorite. Maybe cauliflower wings. As you can tell, I'm vegan. <laughs> All right, we'll do a couple more. Do you plan on getting bottom surgery? If so, which type? I will be making a video about this because I feel like I have a little bit more reflecting to do on that topic. I don't think I will be getting bottom surgery in the next couple of years. However, I don't ever negate it as an option. I have these moments in time where I get really obsessed and dysphoric and really want phalloplasty. Other times the same feelings happen, but it's for metoidioplasty. I feel like maybe just a simple release is in my future and I would be completely fine with that. But at the moment, it's not something I've spent a lot of time reflecting on. I don't feel like at this moment in my life, I have bottom dysphoria that would necessitate having bottom surgery. But this is definitely something I need to reflect on and expand on in a video when I've kind of like decided and like felt out where I'm at right now. But yeah. You sexy Canadian blonde you. I want to see you with a strap on on. I don't think that's a question, but thanks. I should really open an OnlyFans. I get a lot of these comments. All right, so the last question I will answer for this one. Do you think an auto injection is a good way to do your hormone shot? So the first year of my transition, I did injections and I was stressed out because I, I was always so scared of those bubbles, I'm gonna die, you know, I'm very dramatic. And so I, I was just really stressed about it. And then I went off of tea for a bit and when I went back on, I did do injections and it was worse. The, the anxiety was worse and I don't know what it was, but I would think about my injection like on, on a Saturday. My injections were on Wednesdays, you know, like it was just so stressed to do it to myself and I wish that I had somebody else to do it for me but then I don't think I would trust anybody it was just a mess so I instead went on the gel and that was the right decision for me I've been on the gel ever since and I love it and will continue to stay on it however if you're somebody that wants to do injections and only do injections but you're scared of needles I absolutely think auto injectors are amazing so I have two close friends of mine actually who use auto injectors one of the auto injectors I actually made a video about so I'll put that link in the description below so you can take a look you draw the testosterone, you put it in this concoction machine and it auto injects you, that's great. And then I have another friend who uses a different type of auto injector where the testosterone's already in the injector and it injects directly into you and then you just discard of the auto injector, everything is done. I feel like that one's a little more wasteful, however, I've heard that it's kind of covered by insurance now, so I would take a look at that if you're interested. Anyways, that was it for this Instagram Q&A. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in some questions and hopefully I answered them. I just thought it'd be cute to do like a little Q&A because it's been a long time Time. You know, you don't know where I'm at, what's going on in my life. So yeah, that wasn't really my life Q&A though. I just kind of like answered random questions, but whatever. I'll talk to you later. I love you. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>